Hello. For those of you looking into the saltwater aquarium hobby, a number of people have gone and seen, of course, the movies like Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, and various other different things where they get these ideas in their heads about certain things that they want to have in their saltwater tanks. One of the ones that commonly comes up when I see new people coming into the hobby on various forums and groups is a lot of people want to duplicate the uh, dentist office tank from Finding Nemo. Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news for those of you who are looking to do the dentist office tank. Quite frankly, uh, very little from that tank would actually work in reality for a long-term hassle-free setup. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of break it down, just let you know what's wrong with these things and why it's important to note. So that way, you know, somebody doesn't just jump in and then wonder why everything's going wrong for them. So first and foremost that you need to know about this is that the tank, you know, it, it's tough to tell from the movie uh, and the various different angles and stuff like that, but given the rough, um, you know, size and space it took up with on the counter there in the dentist office, it's pretty clear the tank is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 and 30 gallons in size. Now, as far as that's concerned, you know, that is a respectable size tank for a countertop, and it's one that won't take up a ton of space for you, but give you a little bit of room. Um, and I'll let you know later on in this video why that 20 to 30 gallon size is such a problem for what's in it. So, the next thing is, of course, I, and once again, I don't know if the movie company was trying to show off the ineptitude and just the dentist was kind of clueless on this, or if somebody just had absolutely no clue as to uh, keeping saltwater aquariums, but uh, the, the most glaring thing that's come to mind for me after the size of the tank and uh, certain issues with the stocking are the fact that the person who set up the aquascape and design for it, you know, the, the gravel, the bubbler, the, uh, you know, the goofy plastic decorations, the sunken ship and everything, well, guess what? Those are all things that are very common and very popular in freshwater tanks. But you will find very few of these things in a saltwater tank. Why is that? Well, quite frankly, it's just, it's not appropriate. It doesn't work well in a saltwater tank to have these things in there. You want something like a sand substrate. You want something like dry rock that's been seeded to be live rock or live rock itself in order to have the beneficial biological bacterial filter, which makes things a lot easier at keeping things in the tank. In addition, you'll notice there that the only method of water flow and filtration was a hang-on-back filter. There's nothing wrong with using a hang-on-back filter in a saltwater tank, provided, you know, the tank is smaller in size, I would say, and as well as you're using other things with it. For example, all saltwater tanks require a wave maker or powerhead and that is true whether you have corals or whether you don't because the fish do need a certain amount of additional water flow underwater to simulate the ocean currents that they are used to so basically it's just this little underwater fan but if you look there in the fish tank in the movie there is no flow whatsoever in there other than a bubbler and a hang on back filter which once again appropriate for a freshwater tank not appropriate for a saltwater tank so I'm going to go ahead and start getting into the livestock now. Now, probably the most glaring example and the one that's most commonly noted as being completely wrong would be Gil the Moorish Idol. He is a fish that in reality is extremely difficult to take care of in captivity. Even seasoned Aquarius have these things die on them. So we're talking about people with years of experience in the hobby. So, you know, especially for somebody who sees the movie and then decides they want to jump into salt water, you know, both feet first and have this tank, uh, you know, just cool your jets on that and, uh, you know, we'll run through these things together. 
so what we'll do is we'll take a look at the Moorish Idol, which reaches about nine inches in length when it's fully grown. It's very tall because of its fins. And once again, it is a very poor subject for captivity. They do not generally last long in captivity. Um, they're very difficult to keep alive in captivity. And so to take a fish that was designed at minimum for like a 125 to 180 gallon tank and stuff them in a 20 to 30 gallon tank, uh, you know, you just got a complete recipe for disaster with a Moorish Idol in a tank of that size. So the next thing is, you know, the people like the starfish that's on there. Well, the starfish that it actually is is in fact a cold water starfish which would not coexist with tropical reef fish because the water temperature is extremely different between the requirements of the two. So, uh, so once again, the two of them, the starfish and, you know, say a Moorish Idol, Royal Grandma Basslet, and the other fish in there could not coexist because they require different temperatures that uh, where they would be unable to live with each other. Uh, the next issue is, of course, the, uh, the spastic fish, the yellow fish that comes out and freaking out over the bubbles. Uh, that is, in fact, a yellow tang. Now, there are several things wrong with, you know, having a tang in a 20 to 30 gallon tank, even though I know there are videos out there, people saying they've done it and it works great. Uh, as a former yellow tang owner, I can tell you, I'm sorry, it's, it's a recipe for disaster in the long run. Your odds of success are horrible. And here's why. Yellow tangs generally get about eight inches in length when fully grown, and they can reach almost a foot in height when fully grown if they reach their max size. Um, which for a tank that's probably about 30 inches long at best, two and a half, you know, about two and a half feet long, uh, that's an awfully cramped tank for a fish that gets that big. Second of all, yellow tangs, quite honestly, they're jerks. <laughs> I, I had one that literally tried to claim my 90 gallon tank. Uh, you know, a tank that's nearly three times the size of the dentist tank in the office. And I had to pull him out because he couldn't coexist with three or four other fish that were in my 90-gallon tank. And that's all he had to contend with. So um, they, uh, they have scalpels on them. They'll back up. They'll uh, whack other fish with their tail. And they will cut them. Um, they will also, you know, bully and harass and bite other fish. So just in general, just... I, I'm sorry, you know, I, I, I'm not a, not a huge yellow tang fan after my experience with one uh, and having it take over a tank that was significantly larger than what the dentist had in his office. So anyway, the yellow tang is completely out for a tank of that size. Uh, it, it's just your chances of long-term success are incredibly poor with it. Uh, in addition to that, there's also, you know, the goofy crazy fish in there, the, the lady, I think her name was Deb, you know, the, the swirl striped pattern there. It's supposed to be a resemblant of some form of damselfish, uh, to resemble some form of damselfish, but, um, it's, I, I'm not sure what they were doing with the pattern there, because there isn't a damsel that 100% looks like that, but the shape and the size and everything is about the size of a damsel. Damsels are notorious jerks. They will fit in a tank of that size, but once again, terrible tank mates. They will bully and harass other fish. Just plain mean, once again. So, um, that brings us to the porcupine puffer fish. Um, gets about a foot in length. So once again, way too big for a tank of that size. The recommended minimum by any reliable site is about 180 gallons. That's a tank six feet long, two feet tall, and two feet front to back, generally speaking. So just to give you an idea of the, the size and scale that's required for that thing. So anyways, uh, just big, huge old tank required for those things. So once again, 20 to 30 gallons, not realistic for any length of time. So that brings us to the three fish that, or three things in the tank that would actually work in a tank of roughly 20 to 30 gallons. That would be uh, Jacques the cleaner shrimp. They will do just fine in a tank of that size, provided you have just one of them. They'll help clean extra food, clean the fish for parasites. 
Uh, so yeah, that would work. Um, Nemo, uh, also known as an Ocellaris clownfish, maxes out at about three to four inches in length. That could work just fine in a 20 to 30 gallon tank. Um, and as well as the other fish, you know, the germaphobe, paranoid, yellow, and purple fish, uh, which is all actually known as a Royal Grandma Basslet. Uh, the Royal Grandma Basslet could work in a 20 to 30 gallon tank just fine and would be a, a pretty good choice for a tank of that size. So those three fish would work in a tank of that size, but once again, totally different aquascape. It wouldn't have that same look as the dentist office tank. Um, and once again, you would only be having a fraction of what is in that tank able to actually coexist. So in general, it's just, you know, the, as I said, the, the movie is just almost completely wrong with the way the tank was set up, the size, the aquascape. The majority of what was in the tank was unsuitable for that size of a tank. So that's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, it is very important that uh, people be aware of this before they jump into the hobby and just start thinking of duplicating what Hollywood has done, which, as many people know, isn't ent always entirely accurate or more often than not is not accurate. So anyways, uh, that's just kind of give you an idea of what is appropriate for that size of a tank and uh, what you can and cannot do. There are really no suitable substitutes that would give you kind of that same look that could fit in a smaller tank. There just really isn't. There are some suitable alternatives if you have a significantly larger tank, like 100 gallons or more, but not that size. So anyways, that's all I have, and thanks for watching.